Hello YouTube friends, as you probably know by now, I love watercolor. It is thundering. I am obsessed with watercolour and sketching. Recently I've been really itching to try something new and the other day I saw someone, I think it was on Instagram, I really wish I could remember who, but they were doing silk painting and suddenly I realised that you can paint on silk almost like you can paint with watercolour. Let's just have a play around and see what the hell's going on. There's hardly any creators, there are definitely a few, but really not that many people on YouTube or anywhere that really explain the process in detail. So this might hopefully be helpful for anyone if anyone's interested in getting started with silk painting. So I'm using this plastic frame to stretch the silk. I'll put a link to everything in the description below. And I basically have to use these silk pins. And these silk hooks actually came with rubber bands, but I just found it easier and quicker to use matches because the matches fit perfectly in the holes of this particular stretcher bar. So that was just what was easiest for me. It's all a bit fiddly and that definitely is one of the things that is a lot harder with silk painting is just the setup. The actual painting is pretty simple, but the setup just takes a little bit longer than just getting out a piece of paper or opening a sketchbook. So now I've stretched the silk, I've also put on some leggings because white trousers and dye do not mix. Next I used gutter, which is basically a resist. It's almost like how you'd think about masking fluid and it just stops the dye from being able to go beyond where the line is. So basically I'm just trying to draw a straight line around the silk here and that basically should stop the dye from going any further than where I'm putting the line. It's a bit fiddly and kind of tricky to do, but it is a really good tip if you want a nice edge around the border. I think it's gonna take me a little bit of practice to get a straight line though, because it is pretty difficult to do. Then I use eyedroppers. This is just easier instead of trying to pour the dye out onto a palette because it can get everywhere. So I've definitely found that eyedroppers are essential. And then I started painting. I basically wanted to do the first wash almost how you do a first wash with watercolour. So I am just using water here to completely saturate the silk, uh, making sure there's no massive drips. Where there was some drips underneath the silk, I just kind of absorbed that with some paper. And then I just went in with the dye I was using. This is basically the equivalent of ultramarine blue. And I think this other lighter blue is the equivalent of turquoise. So getting the right colours and figuring out all the different dye colours has been a bit of a challenge because they all have slightly weird names. They're not like normal paint <laughs> names, but I've slowly been figuring out and trying to do different mixes and things to get the hang of it. So I've ordered this stuff called anti-fuse and and apparently it's supposed to turn the silk into almost feel like watercolour paper because silk it spreads really really easily so that's great for like a first wash type thing but then if you want to do any sort of details or harder edges or harder lines you can't unless you put this on so I'm just going to put a line of it along the horizon line So I'm just applying the anti-fusant or anti-spread with a brush and just putting it in the spaces where I want it. I think some people do just completely cover the entire silk in anti-spread, but I just wanted to see what would happen if I just did it in the area that I needed it. Also just to not waste all of the anti-spread in an area that I didn't need it. It was interesting when I put the dye up to a section where the anti-spread wasn't actually applied. As you can see here, it kind of blooms out. So I had to be aware of where the anti-spread was and it's kind of hard to see in places, but it does create some interesting effects if you have an area that has the anti-fusant and then an area that doesn't and you can kind of bleed the edge 
above that it's obviously not a very controlled line but I definitely like that part of it I think it's one of my favorite parts of the painting so I'm definitely gonna experiment with this anti-spread again when I do more paintings. Now this section I wanted to get it a bit darker but basically if you wet an area too much you have to keep going because otherwise you'll get a water line where you don't want it. So if you wet an area too much, just be aware that it is very easy to get a water line, which is definitely different to watercolor paper, which doesn't seem to happen as much. And here is the final painting. It's obviously quite a simple one, but I just wanted to try something simple for one of my first tries. And then I filmed a whole outro but I, the mic was off. So this was fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.